Often, minority students face many barriers, obstacles, and challenges to entering and completing a nursing program. These individuals overcame their barriers and reached their goal, and you can too. had said a female shouldn't be a nurse. A nurse is considered someone like a waitress. So if you want to do waitressing, you'd probably make more money going to a restaurant. I don't think you should be a nurse because you're also going to be taking care of male patients. Your job is to get married and have children. I just said, well, I want to be a nurse. I want to take care of people. I don't want to be a waitress. So I would go out to my sisters and say, can you please quiz me? I have a test coming up. I go to my brothers, can I please do a physical exam on you so I can practice this? I, need, I have a test coming up on Friday. So we would kind of have to do it in a, in a different area where my parents were so they wouldn't see. Because if she would see that I was practicing, then I would have to get another sermon from them. <laughs> I think it's very difficult for us um, in the Hispanic culture to try and break the barriers with um, our beliefs and our parents. Um, we're raised very differently and parents believe that by the time you're 17, 18, you should get married and start a family. I come from a Native American background and uh, the culture is such that we were not taught that it was an option to go to college. Um, it was never discussed with us. It was considered that I would grow up, uh, get married, and have children. The goal was to graduate from high school, and that was it. My mom and dad, uh, my uncles and aunts, um, older people that I know at church, you know, they're, all of them had a certain image of, of nursing, and uh, they didn't think that it was for a male. My dad would say to me, "When the pharmacy na, I'm a doctor na, I'm a lawyer hamyon. The business, diga, diga mandrosa, thonu thom mandros vichana. Angre?" Knowing from the age of seven that I wanted to be a registered nurse, and being told in high school that because I was poor and Hispanic, I needed to be a secretary, uh, and being directed that way, uh, really told me that I needed to keep my dream alive and I needed to not let anybody talk me out of my dream. It was a dream that I had that I didn't think was possible for a long time and I didn't know if I could do it so I just started one class at a time and um, got through the program. The senior pastor that, of, of the church that, um, that I, I go to, uh, he would always be supportive of me financially. He would always secretly you know, come by and he would give uh, you know, there was one time where he gave me $500 to go to school, and um, I always remember that. You know, they, the community is, you'll be surprised at how supportive they are. Now we're starting to break a few of those barriers, and we're trying to teach the parents that an education is going to take their kids a lot further than getting married and starting a family. They can do all of that, but you need to be educated first. He came to my graduation, and uh, there was a smile on his face, just, you know, it's, it didn't... It wasn't, you know, saying that he didn't directly tell me, I'm proud of you, but uh, his smile was enough to tell me that, you know, you did well, good job. My dad now talks about it and tries to encourage the other family members. You know, I never encourage you guys to go to school, but I see where your sister is at, and I really want you guys to try and look into going back to school. I didn't know it at the time that it was important, but now that I see how well she does and how happy she is, he does encourage the rest of the um, siblings and nephews and nieces and grandchildren. In the state of California, which is so diverse, there are not enough minority nurses uh, representative of the population that we serve. And so we need more minority nurses that can be able to care for patients of different cultures, different ethnic groups, that understand the uh, different beliefs of these cultural groups to provide excellent care.
Culturally competent care refers to the fact that you are able to connect with the patient's culture and their practices and their beliefs and being able to incorporate all of that into your nursing practice. And when you're providing interactions or when you're providing care to the patient of similar cultural background as yourself, you're able to better understand what are some of the healthcare practices and beliefs that may aid that patient in the healing process. Um, it may, you know, be related to alternative therapies, food choices, as well as communication. We have a large number of Hispanics in California, and we only have only 7.5% of the nurses in California are Hispanic. We have a large number of African Americans in California, and only 4.1% of the nurses in California are African American. So there's great disparities. The population of patients that we serve, especially in California, is so diverse that we need a lot more minority nurses. There are a lot of older generation Asian men, women, elderly that are in the hospital and they don't know how to communicate because they don't speak the language. To me, that's a doorway for me to become a nurse. That way I could be there to assist them and help them. Nursing school is really difficult. You had to sacrifice. You had to give up something that you can do later on. I think for me, being away from my family was the hardest thing for me. My sons. And um, I missed a lot. I missed school functions. Um, even getting to take them to the doctor. <laughs> you know, to say goodnight. Um, I missed and hurt when my eight, nine-year-old, he would call me and say, Mommy, please just come, come home. And I told him I can't. I've got school, I've got clinical, I've got exams, I have a paper to write or my care plans. And um, the biggest challenge is being away from my children. Losing my income has been pretty, pretty detrimental to me here. It's, you know, because you have to survive in the program. You have to maintain your overhead in this program. So losing your income, and not only losing my income, I rented out my home. And in the process of renting out my home, I got a tenant in there who didn't pay her rent. And since I didn't have enough income to fall back on to pay the mortgage, I had to choose. Do I pay my mortgage? Do I pay my tuition? I paid my tuition. In the last semester, I told my sons, you know, this is it. This is the last semester, the last journey. I'm not stopping. And, you know, come May, I'm going to be graduating. And my son said, phew, finally, you know, and like we're, we're almost done. And he said we, because he knew that we encompassed them benefiting from me graduating. I lost a house. I lost a house, but I'm gaining my degree in nursing. I can always get another home. Obtaining this BSN is priceless at this point. I can buy another home. I had just gotten my notice that I was in the nursing program and that we were gonna have orientation. I get this phone call um, that my grandmother, she's being carried off to the hospital and um, I, we get to the hospital, she needs to have surgery. She comes out of surgery, where, you know, she was doing okay. You know, I go home and sleep for two hours, come to orientation, and still to this day, I really don't know what was completely said in orientation, but I was there, you know, and, and the whole entire time I knew that my grandma wasn't going to make it. My grandma always told me I was going to be her nurse, and, you know, it was just, when she passed, it just took something out of me, and it was just, you know, I wanted my grandmother to go with me through nursing school. I'd say the great thing out of that whole experience of, at the hospital was that they were nurses there that were so caring, so loving, um, 
you know, um, just telling my family what's going on in detail where I didn't, you know, where I didn't have to go back and explain this is what they just said to you or, you know, and that motivated me more to, to also, you know, come into school and be, you know, the best student I can be. I went online, I wanted to see um, what the African American nurses looked like back when, back in the day, you know. And so I found this picture, it's a group of African American women in the old nurse hats and their long white dresses <laughs> and their sweaters looking at them knowing that they made it and things were even rougher for them at that time you know and here I am with this perfect opportunity you know to be like them but be better because the technology is better and we have so much re you know all these resources that we we have and you know and I have all this and I can use it and and give, you know, a new name to who I am and what nursing's about and being African American. Success comes from doing the things you least want to do when you least want to do them. Never give up on your dream. Anything you can do in this country, anything you can be when you want to be. For my laptop, my password is sleep because it would remind me I have to turn off that laptop and go to sleep because you can't, you lose sleep because it's, you know, you don't want to fail something that you for so long have been wanting to do. So, lack of sleep, that's the only thing, that's the only thing you have to, sleep is what you have to give up. Everything else is manageable. If you really want it, you just, you have to stick through it because it's going to pay off at the, you know, at the end and it's, it's doable.